John chapter 3. We're continuing a series that we started a couple of weeks ago. And uh, in that series, we have seen that um, Jesus is our Savior. Amen. Jesus is our Savior. And then the, the following week after that, we talked about Jesus as our Lord. Lord. And uh, today, we're going to talk about Jesus as our Master. So everybody say, Savior, Savior. Lord, Lord, Master. So now when Jesus is our Savior, it means that Jesus saved us from our sins and delivered us from the darkness of our past life, the darkness from our old addictions, our old habits, the darkness of old hatreds, into the light of God's love, into changed, transformed lives. I like what Pastor Josh said this morning uh, when he said that God is bringing us from information to transformation. Somebody say amen. amen. Somebody clap your hands right there. That's a sound bite. You need to remember that. We've moved from information to transformation. And today is information time. And we're going to learn today about Jesus as our master. Jesus as our master. I want to read a portion of the chapter that's been the uh, key passage that we've been reading for the last three weeks. And then I want to focus, I want to burrow in. I want to burrow in, I want to focus, I want to dig in to a particular aspect of the reading from chapter 3 of St. John, verses 1 through 4. And it says this. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night. By what? And he said to Jesus, Rabbi. Everybody say Rabbi. We know that you are a teacher come from God. We know that you are a teacher come from God. For no one can do the things you do the way you do them unless God is with him. Jesus answered and said to him, Amen, amen. I say to you, unless one is born again, everybody say born again. Born again. Unless one is born again, he cannot or she cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, but how can a man be born again when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? I mean, can a man get back into his mother's womb and drag himself in? Which is obvious, right? But all that signifies is he, his eyes were not open yet to the teaching of the master. His eyes were not open yet to the teaching of the master. When we say master, or the Hebrew word rabbi, or the Aramaic word rabboni, it means teacher. It means teacher. You cannot really be a master unless you're teaching students. So there must be a contrasting dyad when you're thinking of that type of intellectual framework. You have a master and you have a disciple. You have a teacher and you have a student. Students learn from teachers or disciples learn from their master. 
And so you need to understand what Nicodemus said. He said to him, when he came to him, he said, Rabbi, which means master, teacher. We know that you are a teacher, a master. The Greek word for that is didaskalos. Everybody say didaskalos. We know that you are a didaskalos because the proof is in the pudding. Namely, your teaching ability is verified and documented by two realities. Is everybody listening? Please listen. Reality number one, we know that you come from God because of the miracles that you do, which are the footnotes to make your argument probative. That is, we know that you're special and you come from God Because we saw you open the eyes of a blind man. And we saw you heal a paralyzed man by the pool of Siloam. And we saw you heal ten lepers at once. And we saw you raise a little girl who was on the way to the cemetery. Uh, We saw you heal that woman who had an issue of blood for 12 years and couldn't find a doctor with the right kind of medicine to stop and staunch that flow. All she did was reach out with one gnarled, wrinkled, emaciated fingernail to touch the hem of your garment uh, as she was coming up behind you and immediately her blood thundered to her brain bringing oxygen to body parts that she could never feel for 12 years. And with her flushed cheeks, both from the healing and the embarrassment of being blasted by Jesus in front of the crowd when he said, somebody touched me, and the disciples said, there's 5,000 people around you, master. And he said, yeah, but somebody touched me with faith. Somebody touched me with belief. Somebody touched me with trust. Somebody touched me... Believing the impossible. You see, Jesus is the teacher of possible impossibilities. There's no other guru like Jesus. A yoga master is the yoga master. All he could teach is yoga and yogurt. There are teachers and there's teachers. You see, Nicodemus, this man whose name is victor of the people, conqueror of the people. We know that the prefix of his name, Nikki or Nike, is the logo for Nike, which means victory. Is everybody clear on that? So he was victorious by virtue of the fact that Jesus said to him these words, Therefore a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, demos mean people, democracy, demos, Nike mean victor, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus. Now you need to look at the word ruler because in the Greek it has a definite article before it, which should necessarily mean the supreme teacher of the Pharisees, the teacher, the ruler, the main Pharisee, came to Jesus. Is everybody listening to me? The teacher came to the teacher. Teacher with a small T came to teacher with a capital T. And he taught us to spell cancer with the small C and spell God with a capital G. He's a teacher of impossible possibilities. He came to teach us how to live. Everybody listening? Now we got master mechanics that work on Porsches. You've got Master carpenters 
that work on framing. You got master roofers that work on what? You got master plumbers, you got journeymen, and you got apprentices. I had a master surgeon operate on me to give me a new kidney. And when I was on dialysis for two and a half, carrying on three years, that's why I like to drink coffee when I come in here, beg your pardon, because I couldn't for three years. In fact, I couldn't even go number one. For two and a half to three years, pastor could not go number one. I don't want to be real graphic with you. Graphic with you. And when, when, when we were looking to see where are we going to get the kidney transplant, thank God for Ralph Galanti. God bless him. Amen. God bless Ralph. You need to thank God for Ralph or pastor wouldn't be here. Thank God for my sons who got in line and said, we'll, we'll dance with you, Papa. The only one that, that had the compatible blood type that I needed was Koba. And I'm glad he went because they found out, never mind. <laughs> Just say Koba did, couldn't give me the kidney. And then Josh and David were ready to rock and roll, but they had B positive. And we were looking for a family that we could trade O positive for B positive. But in the meantime, somebody, several people stood up. I thank God for the ones that stood up, said, Pastor, I'll give you my kidney. Well, three of them were young ladies. The doctor said, you can't give Pastor a kidney. You got to have a baby first. I said, don't go out and have one now. Just wait. <laughs> Just wait, 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 wait. But I appreciate everybody that stepped up. But the thing of it is, we started doing research on which was the best hospital that we could go to. And which is the best? We start doing research. And who's the best? Surgeon. A master surgeon. A master. When you go get surgery, you don't want a resident to do it. Especially if you're going to have a head transplant, you want a master surgeon to do your head transplant. You don't want to approach the mirror backwards. We researched it. And we prayed on it, and we found the master surgeon, who was also the teacher of all the transplant, kidney transplant surgeons of this generation around the world, from America to Israel. Dr. Danovich is an older gentleman. I mean, he could tie knots with two fingers. And then we found his best student, Dr. Gritch. Can you believe that God put the best surgeons available for your pastor? Without even asking for it. We just said, we want a good doctor. And Dr. Danovich has taught all this generation of surgeons, transplant, kidney transplant surgeons, the art of transplanting a kidney. And he was there. All I'm saying this is you have masters that can perform and masters that can teach. Is everybody following me? Now, now, you don't want a bad mechanic working on your car, do you? When you take your car to the dealer, who do you want? You want the best, right? You ask for the best. When I take, when uh, Josh and I take our Lex Lexus over to uh, South Bay Lexus, we want the best, so we know who the best is. Don't want nothing but the, oh, he's not available. Oh, we'll wait till he is. Everybody tracking with me? You always want the best. You want the best carpenter. How many want the best carpenter? Can we remodel your house? How many want the best floor layer? Right? You don't want your floor coming unglued after three months. Right? Is everybody listening to me about the master surgeon, the master mechanic, the master carpenter? We want the best. And let me tell you what. There's yoga masters. Right? Um, and there's counselors now that are called life counselors. Might have heard of that? Life what? I'm sorry, life coach. Well, 
you go ahead and get a life coach. But I tell you what, there's one who is the master of all living. And his name is Jesus Christ. He's the master of life itself. And you don't want to learn from a guru that doesn't know what he's guruing about. But if you want to know how to live, there's one life master. And Nicodemus came to him at night. The teacher came to the teacher. To learn what real living was all about. Now, when we speak of Nicodemus, we usually some people speak of Nicodemus, Nicodemus within the framework of suspicion. Under the umbrage of subterfuge that he came by night. And that he wanted, didn't want his friends the Pharisees who called Jesus a blasphemer, a devil, and a demon because he was afraid of what they would say. I don't, I don't think that Nicodemus came that way. I mean, you know, I'm not going to reverse the, the history of interpretation on it, frankly. But I think Jesus and Nicodemus had an interview, as Pastor Josh said this morning, regarding which is the best way to live? Because there's so many voices out there in America today. There's so many voices in our culture, in Hollywood, in the halls and corridors of Washington, D.C., in the world at large. There's a cacophony of voices telling you how to live, what image to follow, who's the right role model. Who's the real way to live? Well, we know it's not money. Because you can have all the money you want and everything you need, you think you need. But you won't enjoy that unless you know how to live. You get all the knowledge you want. But there's not enough information, my friend, to fill the emptiness in our hearts. In that God box that God put into everybody that's born on this earth, that God box that everybody has, some have it empty, some have it full, some have it half full. But if you're born of water and you're born of the spirit, God put something in every man and woman when they were born that only Jesus can fill. And you won't be happy until Jesus fills that God box in your heart. Won't be happy. You won't be joyful. You won't enjoy your children. You'll get hugs that you don't deserve and feel embarrassed for taking them unless you've got Jesus in your heart who justifies the unrighteous and forgives the sinner. Now we're in the Lent season now and it's good for these 40 days for us to remember that we have a life teacher, the greatest teacher of all. Is everybody listening? the greatest teacher of all. And if we're here today and you've been brought here today by your wife or by your husband or by your mom or by your dad and you're kind of here like under coercion, <laughs> let me say this to you. You're not here by chance. You're here because the master teacher is wooing you to him. Now, I like Nicodemus, and I would rather frame him in the framework of optimism and positivity, not negativity, that he came squirming his way at night, dragging himself in. I, I believe he came at night because he was so busy during the day. Opposed to some people, we, and, and me too, I preached that before, but I, I changed my mind. Is it a right to change my mind? Is it okay to change your mind? And some people think you can't change your mind. But if you have a mind, you could change it. It's your mind. Right? Well, you got to keep your promises. Well, if they're reasonable, I'll keep it. 
but maybe I'll change it. Is that okay, people? But you said, well, I'm different. Amen. Praise. Don't look at me like that. I know you don't want to be here. Some of you, not all of you. But you're here because God brought you here today to hear a word from Jesus. The master teacher, the teacher of life itself. Now, here's another, here's the reason why I like Nicodemus. Anybody listening? I like Nicodemus. Watch this, Dr. Matheson. I like Nicodemus, and I think that Nicodemus came with his chest out and his chin up. He was just too busy during the day doing Pharisee things. But he did not call Jesus a devil like his friends did. You're a blasphemer. You cast demons out by the power of the devil. Now, isn't that just stupid? You know, that's why Jesus said, how can a house stand if a house is divided to itself? Why would the devil cast out the devil? You know what I mean? That's simple. A five-year-old can understand that. Sometimes people get so heady, they say stupid things. They said, how can a, you call me a devil because I cast out devils? Now, you know Satan doesn't want a devil cast out of someone else. Right? That's just plain fact. Now, if you lay your hands on somebody and say, woman, come out of this devil, that's different. <laughs> I'm going to choke. <laughs> wow. I'm choking. <laughs> somebody get me some water. But I believe Nicodemus came, and Nicodemus came, he really wanted to know what was it about Jesus and the kind of life he was talking about. Because I want you to know what Nicodemus was. He was not a cynic, and he was not an atheist. He was not. Because Nicodemus said this, we know that you are a teacher that comes from where? From God. Everybody listening to that? We know you're a teacher that comes from who? Therefore, Nicodemus, in his life, had the possibility of being a potential disciple. He came to church because he heard from his cuñao that this is where God healed him. His comadre said that she got prayed for and God healed her body. He saw a drug addict that had been transformed. As they received information about Jesus as Lord and Jesus as Savior, and it was better information than being high on heroin. So let me tell you about that heroin. You'll feel good for a while until it wears off, and then your divorce comes crashing down on you, and your meaningless life and your poverty of spirit, then you have to take it again to forget about that. And then you feel good for a day. And then your hatred and your jealousy and the things you did wrong and your low self-esteem and your lack of integrity and the fact that you stole stuff to pay for your habit comes crashing on you again, so you got to take it again. You follow me? But you only have to take Jesus once. And after you take the teaching of Jesus Christ, of eternal life and the kingdom of God, and after you accept Jesus into your life as your Lord, as your Savior, and as your master, you don't have to take anything like that again because you got the answer to your problems in your own heart. And you got the Lord of all glory, the master of all living, teaching you and me how to walk the right way. Am I listening to me? Yeah, I'm just, just jump, jumping on, on, on the heroin addicts in here. God bless you. You're in the right place today. Or, or if you're on other kind of drugs or whatever. You know what I'm listen, talking about? If people have addictions to all kinds of different things. I met a man that was addicted on himself. Man, why are you going to do it? You're sorry. Why are you going to be addicted on you? First of all, you're ugly. Second of all, you have a sorry life. So why are you going to be addicted on yourself? 
Now let's not talk about the sisters. You know what I mean? We try to tear them away from the mirror after two hours. They got to get up at three to go to work at eight. <laughs> let me ask you a question. Is, and let me say something. Isn't it sorry to be addicted on our sorry self? But there's nothing wrong with making Jesus your daily habit. There's nothing wrong with making the master your daily habit. Anybody paying attention to me? Why? Because he's a life master. And Nicodemus said, already Nicodemus is like many of us that come to church. And, and when we're coming to church and coming up in here in the house of God, we're saying, man, I don't even want to be here. Oh, yeah, God, it's not because of you. God brought you here so that you could have a transformation of life. And so that you could meet the life master. So if he was, not, so Nicodemus, everybody paying attention to who Nicodemus was then? He was open to hearing. So I'm really glad you came today even though your wife dragged you here. I'm really glad for you teenagers that your, your, your feet that brought you even though you don't want to be here. Man. And maybe you do want to be here. Me think, uh, I don't know. Maybe some of you will come here and when you grow up, you'll leave and you don't want to ever come back again. That's fine. But when you find yourself out there in the world, all messed up, you can always, like the prodigal son, turn around and say, Jesus, teach me the way out of here. Yeah. Teach me, though, because I heard about it, and, and now it means something to find our way out. So see, Nicodemus was a seeker. He was a seeker. He was open to change. Is everybody listening to me? So we need to be open to change too because all of us has got things to change. But only the master could teach us. So, you know, does everybody remember how Nicodemus came? Came talking to Jesus and he asked him a couple of questions. We know you're from God because nobody can do the things unless God is with you. Jesus answered and said to him, amen, amen. I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Two things come up right here. One, the way that Nicodemus came asking questions, and two, the content of the teacher of the master's teaching, the content of Jesus' teaching. Did everybody paying attention? First of all, I like the way that Jesus talked to Nicodemus. Nicodemus said, "How are you, Jesus? How's it going? You know, I, and how, how do you do all that stuff that you do, man? It's really, in fact, you know, I've been looking forward to meeting you, but you know, my 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 um, my carnales, they don't like you." They think you're a devil carrying on. I just want to come to make sure. And Jesus didn't say, hey, Nicodemus, hey, how you, how's your mother, man? And he says, how's yours? He said, well, she's, you know, Mary, she's trying to turn water into wine, things like that. <laughs> and how's your feet, though, man? You know, Jesus didn't get into all that with him, exchanging pleasantries carrying on. You know, like we do. How you doing? Good. How's your, how you doing, comadre? And we get into all that kind of pleasantry talk. Jesus ignored the small talk. Because Jesus knows exactly why we're getting close to him. Jesus doesn't need to hear the small talk. Because Jesus can look right into our heart, right into your heart. And he understands what position I'm in right now. He knows you're insecure. He knows you have self-esteem. He knows you need attention. He knows I'm lost. He knows I'm confused. He knows how ugly I feel in the morning when I wake up and wish I wasn't alive. He knows about my separation, my divorce. He knows I'm pregnant and nobody knows it but me. And I'm 16. He knows what I did last week. You know, God sees everything. And God doesn't have to get into a conversation to heal us where we hurt. Because God goes right to the issue, right to the matter, right to the moral. And when God sees what you need, he says this to you, you must be born again. You must be born of the spirit. We need to stop seeing things with physical eyes. And we got to see things the way God is seeing things. And Jesus was the master at teaching us What's most important in life? And what did Jesus say to Nicodemus? How's your father? No, he goes, you must be born again. And Nicodemus goes, you know, guy, here's this guy. He's a doctor of the law. He's intelligent. He's bright. 
Then he said, you mean I got to go back into my mother's stomach again? And he says, oh, no, 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 come on, man. You know that's impossible. I'm not talking about that kind of born again. I'm talking about your spiritual lives have to be open to the ground of all being. Your spiritual eyes have to be open to what's really happening behind what we call space and time. Your spiritual eyes need to be open to what is the true reality behind the reality we know that's just illusory and symbolic. Your eyes need to be open to what God is doing. Your eyes need to be open to know that God loves you. And he loves you so much that he wants you to come out of that darkness by opening your eyes to see that Jesus is truly the Son of God. So Nicodemus, Nicodemus saw what Jesus was doing. He goes, oh. So then Jesus began to teach Nicodemus. He said, first of all, because every master teaches something. Is everybody listening? A, a master surgeon teaches what? Surgery. A master mechanic teaches what? How to fix that car. A master carpenter teaches what? How to build you a house. And a master of all living teaches what? How to live. Does anybody here want to know how to really live? What true life is all about? I do. And guess who is the master teacher of it all? Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. You, hey, Miha, you might be thinking that because you got all kinds of stuff and you have a lot of money or you have joy, you're really smart, you're a genius, or you got so many friends or you got a boat and all that. Those things are all good. They're not bad. But when we start defining ourselves by those things, that's what's wrong. That you aren't what you own. You are who owns you. <laughs> Jesus died on the cross of Calvary to purchase your salvation. And he bought us with a price, the price of his blood. If Jesus owns you, you're in good hands. And then he'll teach us how to live. What did he teach? Jesus taught this. Unless your eyes are open spiritually, you cannot see or enter the kingdom of God. Everybody follow that? So first of all, you have to say yes to Jesus so that our eyes will be open and we could see God's kingdom, his purposes on earth, his purpose for your life because he made you. Right? Right? If you want to fix a Toyota, what does the, manic, the mechanic look for at first? The manual. Here's the manual, and there's your creator. And he knows how to fix what's going on in our life. So he taught about the kingdom of God, God's kingdom. What does that mean? Hey, that God wants you and me to live under his will, mija. Not under my will, but under his will. Not my will be done, but your will be done. Is everybody listening to that? So we're living by my will be done. I want to do it my way. Then is that God's kingdom? No. No, sir. No, man. That's my kingdom. Small K. What else did Jesus teach as the master of all living? Two, he taught about eternal life. Let's get one thing clear. Has everybody heard of infinity? Here's infinity. Here's eternity. Don't confuse the two. Some people think that eternity means that you live forever. Eternity is not a time construct. Is everybody listening? Eternity is not about time. Forever is a time deal. Eternity means the quality of God's life in your heart. So that the God we're going to meet someday has a lifestyle for you and me to live that begins today. So right now, if you have Christ in your heart and he's your master, you have just inherited eternal life, the life of all living. In other words, it's like this. 
what you sow here, you'll wear there. And right now we're sowing up on your eternal life. Does anybody here want eternal life that only Jesus can give? I do. And then Jesus taught us some things that we need to do. Besides entering the kingdom with new eyes, he taught something that wasn't taught by any rabbi ever in the history of rabbinics. He taught something that nobody, nobody in Judaism had ever taught. He taught like a rabbi that was unique in the history of Jewish interpretation of the Torah. You see, because the rabbis, they interpreted the Torah and they taught us that there was a God. And then more rabbis interpreted the interpretation of the law of God, the Torah, which was the Talmud. And then they interpreted the Torah and the, and, and, and the Talmud by the Mishnah. And then the Gemara, the interpretation of the Mishnah and the Talmud and the Torah. So they have a long history of interpreting the Old Testament and the prophets. But only one rabbi, one rabbi ever in the history of rabbis and teachers taught that he was the way, the truth, and the life. And nobody comes to God but by him. Nicodemus was shook up. He goes, you mean I got to believe in you that you're God? And Jesus said, I'm either right or crazy. You got to make the choice. Later on, Nicodemus asked for Jesus' body from the cross. Later on, Nicodemus defended Jesus to the Jewish Congress when they were trying to kill him prematurely. But if you believe in Jesus as the Son of God, and you confess with your mouth that Jesus is the Lord, the Savior. You shall be saved. For with the mouth, confession is made to salvation. 